All right, guys, so this video is going to be all about AQA GCSE Chem Paper 1. So I've been working like an absolute madman to get this one finished because the exam's in only a few days, but there's still time, guys. There's still time to practice past paper questions and revise, do all that good stuff. But the whole point of this video is to make you realize that you need to start studying smarter, okay? Your revision time is precious. Like I said, there's only a few days left before paper one, but regardless, most people that do GCSE Chem are gonna be doing a whole range of other subjects, maybe other sciences, maths, English, history, whatever, all that sort of stuff, right? And you have to be smart with your revision. The next point here is that exams are like a game. Now, I realized this really late, like it wasn't even until after A-levels that I realized this, but there are very specific rules to GCSEs and A-levels, right? And those rules are from the specification, okay, spec, question paper, and mark scheme and examiner's report. Okay, if you go to your exam board AQA's website, you're gonna be able to find question papers, you're gonna be able to find mark schemes, you're gonna be able to find examiner's report, right? The spec tells you what you need to know. The questions is obviously just for good practice and sort of lets you understand what sort of questions you'll be asked in the exam. And these are very similar year after year. Okay, the mark scheme is gonna tell you how to either solve calculation questions, for example, and it's gonna tell you what the examiners want to see to get those juicy marks. Okay, that's what the mark scheme is gonna tell you. And then the examiner's report is gonna tell you where students struggle and to help you avoid mistakes that a lot of students make, and that's just gonna boost your grade in the process. Okay, so these combined is gonna be the rules of the game, and if you understand this, it's gonna help you boost your grade drastically in a very short amount of time, hopefully, right? Now, I've made these videos for A-level chem and bio, but this is the first one for GCSE. So I'm gonna explain it step by step, okay? Which topics should you focus on? Okay, now, when I was doing my GCSE, I thought it was entirely random what stuff would come up on a paper. And to an extent it is, but they have to tick certain boxes, right? When they're creating their questions. So there's gonna be favoritism towards certain topics over others. And this is due to a variety of reasons. It can be difficulty, it can be that it demonstrates some sort of problem solving or, or graph skills or critical knowledge that you need to do to tick the boxes that are in the specification, right? And this is almost like an imaginary game, okay? So the exam boards know what they wanna test you on, they have to develop questions for that and that's gonna appear in your exams year after year, okay? So by knowing these topics that come up, more often and have higher marks given to them, you're gonna increase your chances of getting an eight or a nine. Okay, it's just self-explanatory, right? Next point is use this video as guidance, okay? I'm not psychic, I'm not a crazy wizard, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but essentially what I've done for the purposes of this video is I've looked at every single paper from 2018 to 2023, all right, six papers in total, and I've looked at which topics come up the most, and how many marks are present, stuff like that, okay? Now this is patterns based on previous papers, but I don't know what's gonna happen in 2024. I can just use previous data to sort of predict what's gonna happen, which can be good, because you can sort of look at what's happened previously, is there a high likelihood of this happening? In most cases, yes, but please understand that AQA can do what they want. Are they likely to follow previous patterns of exams? Most likely, but they can do what they want, all right? So, please use the entire specification if you can. Go to AQA on Google, type in AQA GCSE chemistry specification. That contains everything you need to know. I cannot emphasize this enough. All right, so let's look at the topics and the subtopics that can come up in GCSE chem paper one. This is specifically AQA exam board, remember? All right, so I've color coded these. So these are the topics that can come up. So there's five different topics. 4.1, atomic structure in the periodic table. 4.2, bonding structure in the properties of matter. 4.3, quantitative chemistry. 4.4, chemical changes. And 4.5, energy changes, right? Now these are the overarching topics, but then they can be broken down further into what I've called subtopics. So we've got this green color coded cyanide color is these three, right? Then we've got the light blue is these four subtopics. The purple is these five subtopics, et cetera, right? goes all the way down. So all of these subtopics is the information that you can be tested on within paper one. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Again, I, I didn't like get some sort of secret intel. This is all in the specification. It tells you exactly which topics can come up. They cannot ask you anything more. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Next up is the juicy required practicals, which I hate it at GCSE. I don't know why, it's just something about it I just, I just couldn't handle. Um, 
but yeah, they come up. Now this, these three first topics, they don't have any required practicals, okay? Down here, you should be able to see reactions of acids is required practicals one and two. Electrolysis is required practical three. And exothermic and endothermic reactions is required practical four. Now you do need to know these, okay? Do your best to learn these, learn the methods, learn the little caveats and details involved, the apparatus needed, the potential graphs and stuff like that, reaction profiles. You do need to know that in order to get the top marks available within that topic. Okay, so just keep that in mind. What I'm gonna do now is move on to some disclaimers. Okay, this is important. Feel free to skip ahead to the next section. But for those that are interested in terms of my thinking and thought process, I really need you to understand this, okay? 4.3, so this is quant quantitative chemistry. It's all the calculation based stuff, right? Now this is split out, as you can see here, into five different subtopics. So you've got chemical measurements, conservation of mass, so you've got use amount of substance, yield and atom economy, concentrations, amount of substance were related to specifically to gases, right? Now, I combined these in terms of subtopics all back into just 4.3 because you need to do this as one topic. Like there's there's so many overlapping points where let's say you get like a five or six mark calculation question or even a four mark question, right? You're going to be using concentrations. You're going to be using gases and you're going to be using masses most of the time due to the two equations, N equals CV and N equals M over MR. These are your fundamental mole equations. I know I'm going through this really quickly, but hopefully you're aware of this, right? So all of the different quantitative chemistry subtopics can kind of jumble up and appear in the same question within a paper. Sometimes it will just be about concentration. Sometimes it will just be about gases, but they're more likely going to be like the one, two, three mark questions. Okay, so for the purposes of this video to help you guys out, I've combined it all together. Okay, in that instance, then there's going to be the joint formulas that I need to remember. So these are just some examples that I've put on the board here. And you need to remember all the different rearranging and unit conversion abilities. So how do I go from different units like centimeters cubed to decimeter cubed? How do I rearrange one of these equations to make mass the subject, etc.? Okay, all of that comes under quant chemistry, the math side of chemistry. Okay, so that's really important to understand. Do this as one topic, like revise it all together. The other topics you can completely split up, like reactivity of metals and reactions of acids, these are different, you can split them up. But for the purposes of this, keep that in mind, okay? Next up, the other reason to revise this is that within the acids topic, there's a lot of titration stuff, okay? There's a lot of required practical two calculation questions, okay? Now these calculations can be like four, five, six marks, as I mentioned previously, and they fully rely on all of your understanding and maths abilities from quant chemistry 4.3. Okay, so that's just another reason to learn 4.3 and revise it and do practice past paper questions is because it's going to help you a lot when you get to this topic. Okay, just keep that in mind. Now, next up, 4.1.1, which is atomic structure and the periodic table. In the specification, it has kind of like a redundant point where it includes balancing four and a half equations for the entire specification. So every single chemical equation that you can think of, both both four and half, is included within 4.1.1. But for the purposes of this analysis, I've tried to put their relevant equation questions under their specific topic. So for example, if it's an acid formula equation, right, that you've got to do, I've put it under the acids topic rather than 4.1.1. Hopefully that makes sense. Right, so we know what topics can come up, which ones can appear in the exam, but which ones do actually come up and how often do they come up, right? So this chart right here is just like a percentage breakdown of all the marks that came up across the six years. So 100 marks per paper, and then there's six papers, so 600 marks in total. I've just broken this down into percentages, right? So what can we see here? We can see straight off the bat that chemical changes had the highest marks. 31% across the six years, okay? And then from there, it's pretty even across these three, 17-ish percent, and then energy changes is a bit higher at 19%. Okay, so if you don't care about anything in the rest of this video, chemical changes is where you wanna focus a bit more of your time. As I said, quant chemistry is so important because it feeds into the calculations for this. And there's a few calculations in this as well that just, if you bolster your maths abilities in this topic, it's gonna to help you out a lot. Okay, and then from there, I would say these four are pretty even, okay, apart from that. 
So that's a little overlook of the topics, but I'm going to go into more detail in a minute in terms of the subtopics, like where you really want to focus your time. But on this table right here, this is just a cheeky UMS grade boundaries table. Okay. If you're not aware, every year, 2018 all the way to 2023 right here, it's pretty similar year after year in terms of how many raw marks you need to get. Now, because this is out of 100 marks, right? This is also percentage because anything you divide by 100 is going to make it into a percentage, right? So we can see there's 71 raw marks here on average across the six years required to get a nine. And then it's 60 required to get an eight. Okay, it's 71%, 60%, same thing because it's out of 100 raw marks. And then if we look down here at a seven, it's about 50%, guys. So if you get 50% of the paper correct, you're getting a seven, 60% you're getting an eight on average. Now you can see here there's, there's sort of ups and downs as we go, but for the most part, that's what you need to aim for. So if you guys weren't aware and you were thinking, oh, what, like, what do I need to get? I'm doing past papers, but I'm not sure what I need to get an eight or a nine. Here you go, okay? Right, so let's move into a paper one analysis. So I've just picked a random one, 2022, as an example, just to show you a little bit about my sort of exam philosophy and my thinking behind studying. I didn't have this at GCSE. I didn't have this at A-level. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but looking back, this is sort of my thought process, okay? So again, on on the this table right here on the right-hand side, we have the grade, so 9, 8, all the way down to 5 and we have the marks required. It's kind of similar to what we looked at, but this is specifically for 2022, okay? So that's what we're looking at here. So what does this chart show us? Now, this y-axis right here is just the number of marks for each topic that came up, and these are the topics on the bottom, right? More specifically, the subtopics, okay? I've broken them down further into these ones right here, okay? But remember, I've joined quantitative chemistry to be one thing, okay? Now, as you can see, there's a varied amount of marks allocated to each subtopic, okay? You can see here that reactions of acids is the highest. And then we've got exothermic and endothermic reactions, second highest. Then it drops down to quant chemistry at 12, then electrolysis at 10, the periodic table at nine, etc. Okay, these are all pretty similar right here. Now, what does this black dashed box tell us? Okay, this tells us the amount of marks, if you got four marks available for these specific subtopics, right? This tells you that you got 66 marks, okay? And that 66 marks will be enough to cross the threshold to get an eight, okay? So essentially what I'm saying is that you could answer, if you revise properly these topics in full and you got 100% marks available for these subtopics, you could close your paper, ignore all this and walk out the exam and you still come out with a grade eight, right? Obviously, you don't want to do that. You want to do your best and try and like answer everything available. But that's what I'm trying to make clear to you guys is that there is preference and favoritism towards specific topics. Okay. Now, obviously, these can be interchangeable because it's they're all like nines and eights. So they would all get you an eight. Okay. Now, if you need a nine for whatever reason, just include another topic. If you only need a seven, drop it down one. All right. So that's just to exemplify to you that certain topics are have higher marks. And that, again, could be due to difficulty, length of the topic, showing something that they want you to show, required practicals coming up, stuff like that. Okay. But the next thing I want to point to is we can't just look at one paper. We can't go, okay, this is what the topics were in 2022. I'm just going to revise those topics. We have to look at patterns across the board for every single year. All right. And that is what I've done here. Okay. Remember, everything's color coded, so it should help you out a bit. And this is the analysis of all available marks. So all 600 marks from 2018 to 2023. So as we can see here, it's kind of a given. I've combined all the 4.3 subtopics into just quant chemistry. And I explained why I did that at the beginning of the video. But it's also to show you how important this, this topic is within chemistry. All right. Now, obviously, collectively, let's say we looked at the reds as one topic. This is going to be a lot more marks than this if I combine them, which is exactly what we can see here. OK, hopefully that makes sense between these two. So you actually get more marks from re revising this entire topic, but I've combined them into one right here. OK, so you do want to focus on quant chemistry if you can. If you really, really struggle with maths, leave it and focus on the rest and work your way down here. OK. But essentially, what I'm trying to teach you here is you want to focus your the bulk of your time 
up here. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick example right here. You have two students, right? You have Dom, Dominic, and you have Kate. Okay, two students right here, Dom and Kate. Dom's like, you know what? I'm going to look at my revision timetable. I've got GCSE Chem Paper 1 coming up. I'm going to focus on exothermic and endothermic reaction. All right. And I'm going to devote six hours. I'm going to do six hours, a full day of revision. I'm doing my flashcards. I'm doing my past paper questions. I'm doing everything I need to do. Kate's doing the same thing. Okay. She's doing six hours, but she decides to revise the periodic table. Okay. And everything that is involved with that, all the different groups and stuff like that. Okay. As you can see here, this is roughly double the marks as this. Okay, obviously this is across the entire board, but who do you think has a higher chance of getting an eight or a nine, basically as they pick these random topics? It's Dom, right? Dom has done the work and he happened to just at random pick this topic and she at random picked this topic. Okay, but that's what I wanna show you is, you can have two people in a class that are banging out revision, absolutely crazy, doing six hours in a day, and they're gonna get different outcomes because they chose different topics. I hope that makes sense. Obviously, if you're going for an eight or nine, you wanna do your best to cover the entire thing. But when you're getting close to exams, you, have, you only have a certain amount of hours in the day, right? So that's what I wanna get across to you guys. So let's explore this a bit further. Now within this table, I've broken down a few things. Again, I've color coded it. So if you guys want to take a screenshot, send it to your mates, hopefully it can help them out. I wish I had access to this paper in GCSE because honestly, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing in GCSE. Everything was just a blur. So what we've got here is the subtopic again, broken down and color coded. We got the total marks that appeared just like this, this chart right here, okay? So the total marks right there. We've got the paper frequency, all this tells you essentially is did it how many papers did it appear in? So when you got a six, it was in every single paper. When you got a five, a year was skipped. When you got four, it was only four of the papers, etc. That's pretty simple, hopefully, right? And then the next thing is average marks per paper. So this is just this number, the, the total marks, divided by the frequency to give you average marks per paper. What does this tell us? This is actually really useful. It tells you that when that topic did appear, how many marks on average were available, all right? So this one right here, quant chemistry, came up in all papers. On average, it made up 15.8 marks per paper, or around 16% of the paper. Whereas when you got this one down here, the periodic table, even though it came up six times, so exactly the same amount of times, 7.8 marks on average, okay? So about half the marks for this subtopic. Okay, maybe that was a bad example because I've combined this into one, but you could do the exact same thing for reactions of acids. 15.3 on average, right? Compared to 7.8. So about double, give or take. But it just shows you where you want to be focusing your time. Okay, so if you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh, I still don't really know what he's saying, what's going on, focus your time up here, okay? the best you can. Obviously that you can't get away with certain things, right? So like some bonding knowledge is gonna feed into other topics. And like with 4.1.1, if you don't know how to balance an equation or do a half equation, you're gonna struggle with chemical cells and fuel cells, reactivity of metals and stuff like that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So if I was looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, we've got paper one, 2024, what is likely to come up? If these have come up every single year, it's a high likelihood that they're gonna come up in this year as well, at least in some capacity. Okay, this one right here skipped a year, so maybe it'll come up this year instead. All right, so just keep that in mind. But again, it's got lower marks allocated to it. So even if it does come up this year, you don't wanna put too much time into it. Okay, again, AQA can do what they want, so they might wanna chuck in like 20 marks on chemical cells and fuel cells. Are they likely to do that? No, I don't think so. But again, cover everything if you have the time, but you're probably short on time because it's only in a few days. So do your best to focus up here and it should boost your chance of getting an eight or a nine, okay? Or just increasing your grade in general. So that's the video guys. I hope you found it helpful. I hope it streamlined your revision a bit and made you realize where you want to focus your time. Screenshot this table, send it to your mates. I really hope it helps you out. Like the video if you want to see a breakdown for paper two. Best of luck in your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.